Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I'm going to start a first video in a series about the Raspberry Pi camera module. So I'm thinking that this is maybe be four videos, maybe five. We'll start by looking at the uh, Raspberry Pi camera module, how you install it, how you use it in its basic simple setup. Then maybe we'll go on to look at how you access it from a language like Python, maybe some projects. And then I think we'll get into uh, computer vision, facial recognition, and so on using that camera. So lots of potential what we can do here today is the introduction video. What is the camera? How does it work? And so on. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So one of the advantages of the Raspberry Pi board is it comes with a connector where you can connect a camera to it and of course that can then be built into a case, into a housing, into a robotic project, into whatever it is that you need to do and it's kind of directly, not through USB, it's connected directly into the board itself and there's full support inside the operating system uh, for that camera. And as I mentioned in the introduction, you can use it from the command line, you can use it from your own, within your own programs, you can program it, you can capture video, you can capture stills, absolutely very flexible in what you do. So there have been a variety of different camera modules available over the years for the Raspberry Pi. The initial version had a five megapixel sensor that was superseded in 2016 by a version with an eight megapixel sensor, and that can do 1080p at uh, 30 frames a second for video recording. There's also the no IR nor versions of it, which have uh, don't have the infrared filter, no infrared. Uh, and those versions are great if you're doing kind of, you know, uh, wildlife photography or you need to see things in low light uh, outside in the darkness, capturing what animals are in your garden, whatever it is you need to do. So there is the uh, no IR version of the cameras. And there's now also a HD version, which has a 12 megapixel sensor. In this video, I'm going to be using the V2 version with the uh, IR filter. So it's just basically a normal camera. So the Raspberry Pi camera module is compatible with all the Raspberry Pi boards, starting with the Raspberry Pi Model 1B, all up to the Raspberry Pi 4 and whatever comes in the future, I guess. In fact, it even works on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Two things to mention about the Raspberry Pi Zero. One is that some of the early models did not have the uh, camera connector on it, so you have to make sure that you have one with the camera connector. All the latest revisions, including the Raspberry Pi Zero W, all have the camera connector, but the camera connector is actually smaller. It's a mini connector. And so therefore you need to get an adapter, a different ribbon cable that can connect from the module to the Raspberry Pi. And those are sold separately by the Raspberry Pi organization. Okay, so let's take a look at how you connect up the camera to your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so here is the Raspberry Pi camera module, as you can see, circuit board with a lens on it, and then a ribbon cable, which of course connects into the Raspberry Pi. Now connecting it to the Raspberry Pi is quite simple. There are these ribbon cable connectors. You've got to choose the right one. This one here is for the camera. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. You have to make sure you're picking the right one on your board. And all you do is you just pop up this little connector here. You can see it just, just comes loose. And the trick always is that on these cables, there's a side with the pins and there's a side which has no pins. The side with the pins always has to go away from the clip, from the clamp. So here's it. So we're putting in the blue side towards the clamp and the actual uh, pins are going the away from the clamp. You just slot that in there, just push that in there and then push the plastic clamp down in its place. And in fact, you could actually just lift that slot. You shouldn't do that. We don't want to put any extra pressure on it. But there you go. It's actually connected uh, in place. And now the camera, uh, it, it will work when you boot up your machine. Okay, now it's all connected. You can, of course, boot up your Raspberry Pi now. Let's go over to the desktop and command line and see how you use it. Okay, so now the camera's connected and we have booted up the Raspberry Pi. Here I am on the desktop. Now, a few things you need to do. First, we need to go over to the little Raspberry Pi start menu here. Go to Preferences and then go to Raspberry Pi Configuration and then go to Interfaces and make sure Camera is enabled. Okay, so if it's disabled, make it enabled, and you may be asked to reboot after you click OK. Another quick tip, if you're using VNC like I am, because I'm not actually connecting this to a monitor, it's just separate, you need to start by clicking this VNC Connect uh, icon up there, go to this right-hand menu, Options, 
and then go to troubleshooting and tick enable direct capture mode. And this is because when you display a preview for the camera, if that's not enabled, it won't show over VNC over the network. It would show on a normal screen if you're connected to HDMI, that's absolutely fine. If you're connecting over VNC because it's a headless setup, then you need to make sure that has been enabled. Okay, so how do you actually use the camera? Very simple, if we start a command line here, like I have, then the simplest thing to do, we will just go into the uh, desktop uh, directory, so then it will appear here on the desktop whenever we capture an image, and the easiest thing to do is you type rasp still, take a still photo, minus O for output, and then we're just gonna say one dot JPEG, and that will take a photo, there we go, shows the quick preview, and takes the photo. So here on the desktop now, notice we have this 1.jpg photo. We can double click on that and have a viewer come up and there we go. You can see the little Dalek inside of my light box. However, you will notice that actually it's uh, upside down. So you can actually do different types of rotation. So we could do here at the end, minus rot for rotation 180. And then we do the same thing. And now we can see from the preview that's coming up that the Dalek is the white ray round. And then finally that's now created, overwritten the same file. We double click on that. And now we can see there it is, the right way round. Now you don't actually have to take a picture each time. You can do raspberry still minus P for preview. And then you can say, I want to open a preview window at zero, zero, top left hand corner and let's make it uh, 1280 by 720. And let's say now we want the preview to last, T for timeout, 5,000 is milliseconds, so five seconds, 5,000 is five seconds. And this will now bring up a preview. Oh, I didn't put in the rotation, so we can see that it's upside down, but this will last three seconds. Doesn't take a photo, just shows you the preview. An alternative to the minus rot 180, which we did is to do minus VF, vertical flip, that would do the same thing. There we go. We can see that it has been flipped around there. Uh, so it is the right, right way round. Uh, and that's basically it. There's loads and loads of different options you can use here on the command line. For example, we could do the same thing and we could apply a, uh, a video effect. So uh, if we do now minus IFX at the end, negative, will show the picture uh, using you know the negative colors, there you go, all blue and uh, like that, and the blacks and the whites all change because it's using the the negative. And you know we could there's loads of these. We could do another one, uh, oil paint. Let's see what that does. There you go, an, an oil painting effect, and so on. Now in the same way that you can capture stills, you can also capture video. There is a Raspberry Vid program. The the way you use it is very similar to the stills. Here we are saying. T minus 5,000, it's gonna be a five second video. We're also gonna see a preview here, exactly the same, a 1280 by 720 window. And of course we're using the VF to flip it round because of the way my camera is set up. And that will record a short five second video. There we go, but the only animation we've got is this little light flashing here on my power strip. So there you go. Uh, and it doesn't record a, a video file that time. If we did minus O for output, we could do minus O 1.mp4 and that will record the same thing and put it into an mp4 file that you can process later. There you go, it appeared there on my desktop. Now there's loads and loads of different options and there is full documentation over at the raspberrypi.org website. I'll leave a link in the description below. And as you can see here, it talks about all the different options you can use uh, and the you know different uh, settings for exposure the different settings for auto white balance and all those different effects we tried a couple of them there so really worth looking at that page if you want to try to find out some more advanced stuff that you want to do in your particular camera setup Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Raspberry Pi camera. As I said, several more videos coming down the pipeline. If you have any ideas that you'd like me to cover, please do tell me in the comments below and I'll see if I can integrate those into the videos. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and we're all at the mercy of the YouTube recommendation algorithm. So the best way to make sure that you know that I have dropped a video is to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.